yourself. You want my blood? Come then, dog. <laughs> He's mine. A great deal in this conflict, but we stand to lose everything if we do not stop fighting and work together. A true war chief would never partner with cowards. Hello guys, this is Donuts Movies, and today I got another World of Warcraft lore lesson. In this video, I will be covering Gronin, and even though he's not really a currently relevant character, I still thought I would do a video on him since a lot of people don't really know his lore, and kinda only know him as the old NPC from Deleran, and from that older cinematic where he kinda made a minor appearance, because a lot of his lore is contained in the novels. So without further ado, let's just get into his story. So Ronin was first introduced in the Day of the Dragon by Richard A. Neck, and was seen as this like young reckless mage and the time period is during the second war and even though a lot of orcs have already been defeated the dragon maw is still making a problem for the alliance because through the demon soul with the deathwing's manipulation they captured alexstrasza and they're using her in order to breed mounts for their army thus making themselves very hard to fight now on the other side you have the kirintor and the council of the six mages and next to them there is ronin who is looked down upon by the kirintor and isn't even trusted because of his previous mission. Now what happened is that Ronin killed off his fellow mages in like a mission against the orc warlocks and he insisted on coming alone as he knew he works better alone but the Kirintor just denied his request and they sent him an escort and because of the spell he used he killed both the warlocks and the mages and you can tell even from the books for the rest of his life he really feels bad about it and just wants to make it up in some way. The Kirintor, not trusting him, wants to send him off on a menial task to go to Grimbatol and just report back. But something else was about to happen as the dragon Crassus manipulates the council as a sixth mage and he sends off Ronin on a mission to save Alexstrasz. Now of course Ronin just jumped on this opportunity as he thought that the Kirintor was giving him a second chance and sort of a way to redeem himself as they could then see him in a better light instead of just this reckless mage they want to get rid of. But the truth is he was just being manipulated by Crassus in order to help his fellow dragon aspect like Straza, and even though his intentions weren't as bad he was still being used. He went on his way, but of course not sent out alone as the rest of Windrunner, the ranger, accompanied him in order to make sure he got to his ship safely. As you might know, they got married later on from the other stories, but at the start they didn't really hit off at all. I mean, he saw her as an annoyance as he thought that he could do just as well on his own and she saw him as this elegant mage that she had to escort because it's like her duty and not many elves at the time actually were with the alliance. Now of course, just to make the entire novel interesting, the things just get out of hand and the ships get burned by the dragon attack, so he really has no other way to get there without the help of Falstad Wildhammer and his griffin riders, which he didn't really like at the first time he met when they were repelling the local dragon attacks, but whereas he helps him get the support from them and delivers him to his mission location. And that is kind of the part where he learns that being kind gets you a lot further than just barking out orders at people. And that is sort of the way when they kind of start to hit off as a romantic couple. Now, through the entire book, Deathwing has been just manipulating, posing as Lord Prestor, and also trying to manipulate Ronin later on just for his own agenda. After Crassus apologizes to Ronin for manipulating him, as he saw that his manipulation, even though with good intentions, was really no better than what Deathwing was doing. And even though Ronin was pretty pissed off at first, as he thought like the Killing Tor was giving him a second chance. He still kinda understood Crassus and he agreed to help him and in the end he actually freed the Dragon Queen by destroying the Demon Soul. Now I won't go too much into detail here on how it happened but you can check out my Alexstrasza lore lesson as I cover the situation from her perspective so I will put an annotation in the video if you wanna watch that. After that the battle was over, the Dragon aspect was free and the orcs destroyed and the Ronin were just starting to fall in love with Veressa and they have been through quite a bit together and it was looking like they would live a happily ever after <laughs> as you have in the fables in Lordran. but little did they know about the third war and everything that was to come. And of course her homeland was destroyed and Ronin's family was also dead, they were mostly killed in Underhall. So they only kinda had each other and they got married. But there was little to no break for him as Ronin was summoned by Crassus again who needed help just while Varessa was pregnant with his twins. 
Now he together with Crassus and Broxigar went 10,000 years back in time during the period of the first Burning Legion invasion. Now again I won't really go too much into detail here since it's a part of a trilogy and there is just so much stuff. But I should make a video of it at some point like covering the entire trilogy. And you can also watch this amazing fan made movie called The War of the Ancients obviously. Now I'm still really impressed by it as they built it for like 3 or 4 years and it's almost like a 2 hour movie like fully animated and everything covering the War of the Ancients, so I will link that in the description if you want to check it out and see what really happened there. What really happened there is he just assisted many famous characters like Illidan, he was even his mentor, he also saw Malfurion, Tyrande and many others, and once they were done, Nosdormu allowed Ronin to return just as Veresa was about to give birth to his children. Later on, he becomes the leader of the Kirintor, much to everyone's surprise, although even though it is like a big and an honorable role, he still doesn't really take it because he wants to, but more because he wants to take responsibility of protecting the world of Azeroth. What he really wants to do is just stay with his family, but just living a normal life wouldn't really help the world and he would like have more influence by being the leader of the Kirin Tor and he would protect the world from all enemies. Now after that the Dalaran moved to Northrend and the Kirin Tor was under the attack of the Blue Dragon fight because the leader Amelagos went insane and declared war on all spellcasters because he thought they would bring the Burning Legion again. Mainly the Kirin Tor, he, like the war was declared on all spellcasters but it was mainly the Kirin Tor. Now Ronin had no other choice but to defend his people and go to war and in this he was helped by Lextraza because she knew what was going on with Maligos and also because she promised to keep his skin alive because he saved her back during the second war from the Dragon War clan. Now this is sort of the pre Wrath of the Lich King, the Wrath of the Lich King period where he makes his first appearance in game and is located in Dalaran. He also makes his first appearance in a cinematic during a trailer for the Secrets of Uldor a preview thing, where he urges Varian and Garrosh to stop the fight and focus on the real threat that they had uncovered and that is the old god Yogg-Saron that was locked up under Northrend thousands of years ago by the Titans. Now of course he has a role as the leader of the Kirintor and he helps the Kirintor fight the Blue Dragon fight, but after Red to the Lich King he didn't really do all that much, although he did have a role in Stormrage as he was caught in by the Emerald Nightmare and he also attended Malfurion in Tyrande's Vending, where he and his accompanying Magi from Deleran created a bunch of magnificent fireworks in order to mark their 10,000 year old relationship. And now in Tides of War, during Mists of Pandaria, is when he makes his final appearance. Now at this point, Garrosh is already waging war on Terramor and the Alliance, and Dalaran are not wanting to stay silent because if they did stay silent, the Horde would consider that the Kirin Tor doesn't really care and that they can do just whatever they want. So they sent Ronin and a bunch of other magi to defend the city and one of the magi was Talon Songweaver and he is one of them but in the end he turns out he was a spy for Gerash Hellscream and he assists the horde in breaking through from the inside. Now later on Ronin notices a goblin machine flying ore with a huge mana bomb and thinking quickly he realizes that Jaina's tower is heavily warded in magic and that throwing the bomb to it would localize the blast and it wouldn't do as much damage. He brings Jaina into the tower and casts a portal, already deciding that he was to sacrifice himself and despite Jaina's pleas to free himself instead of her, since he has a family and she doesn't really have much, he decides that Jaina is the one who is supposed to lead the Kirin Tor, thus pushing her through the portal to safety. Almost immediately he dies from the Arcane Blast, successfully saving Jaina and localizing the blast. And that is where his story ends. Later on he is mentioned in war crimes by Varessa who is devastated with the loss of her mate and wants nothing more than to just kill Garrosh who was the most responsible for Ronin's instead. But in the end she like meddles with Sylvanas and all of that thinking that she can go against everyone but in the end like she thinks about her children and just goes back to her previous self. Now all in all I think his story is pretty amazing and even though a lot of people don't really like Richard Anex writing. I mean, I personally thought there was some issues with it as well, like him mentioning over and over again that he has red hair and just kinda useless things he does. But small things aside, Ronin is an amazing character and even though he isn't really like your perfect superhero, his sacrifice in the end was really noble. Alright, and that is all I have for this lore lesson, hope you have enjoyed and don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and keeps all these videos going. Also, feel free to leave your feedback on what lore character you would like to see next as I do read through all of the comments and I do take everything into consideration. Also check out my Twitch TV stream as I will be streaming there a bit more seriously now and I will also be doing the 12 hour stream probably one day after the upload of this video. So thanks a lot for taking your time to watch this video and see you next time.